Hi everyone, welcome to a new devlog. My name is Danny Marty and I'm developing my second commercial video game. It's a story-driven adventure game where you play as an anti-hero, underdog kid who is forced to venture in a new world to save his grandmother, who is torn between life and death after being attacked by strange creatures. It's a game inspired by Last of Us and God of War. This month I have been struggling with level design. In the last devlog, I was explaining that uh, I was ready to replace my placeholders for the definitive uh, models, but when I was done, I realized that my levels were very repetitive and boring. So I decided to throw all that progress and start from scratch. And to do things differently, I decided to do some research before doing anything else. So during my research, I came across a couple of very interesting resources. One is this YouTube channel that talks about uh, dungeon and dragon uh, map design. He has a lot of videos talking about this topic and gives very good advice that I think it can be translated to level design for video games. The other resource that I found that was very interesting is uh, this archive of free maps for dungeon maps that we can use as foundation for our level design or we can use them as they are because they are free. So once I found a couple of maps that I liked, I started to sketch my own design, taking into consideration a couple of things that I learned from those videos. One is the navigation between rooms and the second one is the balance between combat, loot, and quietness. I'll leave the link to those resources in the description if you want to take a look. So once I have my level design on paper, I started to recreate it on Unreal. And I was using static meshes, but then I realized if I was using blueprints I could probably uh, have more control and build my levels faster. And I created this blueprint where I'm exposing some settings, as you can see here, to have more control when I'm building my level. In this case, we have a corner and because of the nature of the walls, uh, they are overlapping in this point and this is creating some Z fighting that it's not going to look good on game. So uh, one of the settings that we can adjust in the editor is the kind of wall that we have. So in this case, I'm going to change these walls to have a better matching. So here I can change the corner and I'm going to say this is a left corner and this is uh, the right corner. So as you can see, if I move and then we can see like now there is no more Z fighting and the walls match perfectly. On top of that, uh, we can add some detail. For example, in the corner um, here, if I select the right wall, uh, we can add, add more detail. That's just another mesh that um, goes in the corner so it can it can potentially um, hide the seam. And on top of that, um, we can add like uh, random decals. So all our walls are different and that brings more variety and diversity to the game. So I was very excited because I was able to build the level very fast. And as you can see here, we have a very clean looking dungeon that um, I still have to create a second pass with uh, smaller details and add more dust and dirt and all of that stuff. But then when I was testing the level, I realized that I was getting all of these like weird white artifacts But when I was moving the camera. And after some research, I realized that that was due to the occlusion cooling. The occlusion cooling is a performance setting that comes by default in Unreal. That what does is it hides uh, all the meshes that are not visible in the camera range. So that makes your level more performant because 
But then we get all of these white uh, artifacts because our meshes are getting uh, rendered or hidden. On top of that, uh, I had another issue and it's the, the draw calls. At this level, the performance is not too bad yet because I don't have too many meshes, but I can see like it can be put a potential issue later when we have more elements, especially when we add all the detail. So this is something I had to address and try to fix. If you want to learn more about the occlusion cooling, I recommend to watch this video. It's called Understanding Cooling Methods from the Unreal Engine uh, uh, YouTube channel. I'll, I, will link, I, will, I will leave the link in the description. In their video, they give some solutions to that uh, white popping that we have in, in the level. One of the solutions is to use bigger meshes because right now uh, my modular design is uh, using, for example, the wall. It's a three, three per three meter wall. So obviously for a level of that size, even if it's not that big, we have like at hundreds of, of walls. So the occlusion cooling has to check all of those models and see if they are in range of the camera or not. And that creates like the performance issues and the, 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 the white artifacts. So one of the things I did to fix my issue with the artifacts was to go back to the static meshes. I still use the modular design, but when I have a wall that it's ready to go, um, I go to the modeling tools and then I here there is an option that says you can merge the, the mesh. So this has some advantages. The first one is we reduce the draw calls because it was instead of three draw calls, we have now one. And the second one is uh, because it's a bigger piece, the occlusion cooling uh, needs to calculate less uh, meshes to hide or render. On the other hand, because we are using Lumen, um, we need to take into consideration that uh, the walls, uh, the floors and the ceiling need to be in separated meshes because Lumen uses distance fields and what they call surface, surface cachet. And, um, and as they recommend in this video, the walls, the floors and ceilings need to be separate meshes. So there is a lot of uh, take into consideration when creating our levels, because it's not just uh, to create the level, it's uh, the gameplay, it's the technical aspects, it's the lining. So level design is hard and there is a lot of things that we have to take into consideration. Created my level design now, it's uh, using merge uh, static meshes and I merge the walls uh, like in a natural way. For example, as you can see here, we have uh, this room. I merge the walls in the way that they are naturally built. So you can see here, and the same with the floors and, and, and the ceiling. So once I created again the level with the merge static meshes, I was checking and I was kind of happy because the the artifacts weren't there but as you can see they are still happening and this is due because even if the the, mesh, the walls are a bigger mesh and they are all merged they are still meshes that are out of the range of the camera and they have to be rendered or hidden based on the solutions that they were given in that video uh, um, I used one that I think it's not very technical, but uh, that's the trick. And as you can see, we are getting all of these white artifacts because our background or it's white. It's like we are getting all of that. So as they were explaining in their video, what I did, it's uh, if we come to our design, I created uh, this huge cube. And this is very simple. It's just a cube 
that has the normal inverted. So the normals are facing the interior of the cube. And then I gave the same material and the walls. So when we are playing uh, uh, the level, and we are checking the popping, it's still happening, but because the we are in this huge cube, we are not perceiving the the popping. So this is a good trick to have in hand to to fix all of these like artifacts and issues with the the, the occlusion cooling. I will leave the link to those two videos in the description because I think uh, they are very useful and they have a lot of useful information that we can use when building our levels. On the other hand, I wanted to mention that uh, a couple of days ago, I published a tutorial to, with my solution to fix this uh, bumpiness when moving along of the stairs. So I will leave the link in the description as well. So if you're interested, you can check it out. Here you can see like the it's, the movement is very smooth, and if we go to the normal, we get all of this bumpiness from the IK of the character. So as you can see, it hasn't been a lot of progress this month. I have been really struggling with the level design, a lot of back and forth, a lot of learning and trying different stuff. And yeah, I guess that will help me in the future and I hope in the long run it's going to save me time. I'm, I feel the progress is very slow, but I'm learning a lot and I think that's important in my journey as well. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, please use the comments below and see you soon. Bye bye.